Okay, so I'm just going to wait a, maybe 30 seconds to a minute to make sure that everybody's on uh, can connect in. So please be patient. Okay, uh, but thank you very much for being part of this uh, CFST food cluster uh, presentation, and we really look forward to uh, your questions. And we can we most certainly will have answers for you. If we don't have them today, uh, we'll be able to get back to you. So for the questions and answer on the, the, the bottom, there's a Q and A little, uh, and there's also a discussion box. So put it, put your questions in the Q and A, and at the end of the session, we'll be able to uh, go ahead and answer them. So I'm just wondering, do we have all the participants that that uh, have requested that there be here? So so if I show twenty, I, got, I show twenty one now. Yeah, you okay. can proceed, Louis. I can proceed. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, so uh, welcome to the CIFST food cluster. Um, we'll continue with the next slide. Hang on. Whoops. Oh, technical difficulties. Okay, introductions. So let me introduce myself. Uh, my name is Louis Ayotte. I'm the president of the CIFST. Philip Lee Wing, who's, uh, you can just, yeah, raise his hand, okay. He's the science director of the CIFST food cluster. And Constance Wrigley Thomas is executive director of the CIFST food cluster. We're the three key people uh, that are going ahead and ensuring that the cluster, the food cluster, will become a reality. So if we can go to the next slide. Okay, so, uh, yeah, okay. Yeah. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna deviate a little bit from this, okay, and get into the program priorities uh, so there are three new priority areas, okay? One is climate change and environment. The other one is economic growth and development. And the third one is sector resilience and societal changes. So what exactly is climate change and environment? Well, that would be research aimed at developing solutions to reduce greenhouse gas emissions, sequester carbon for agriculture to contribute to the 20, 30 and 2050 climate targets that the Canadian government has established. It will also support research in the sector resilience and adaptation to climate change and research on other environmental and sustainability issues facing the sector with a focus on federal priorities of biodiversity, soil health, water quality, air quality, and plastics. And for the economic growth and development, okay, research is to increase value added domestic and export sales of agricultural, food and agri-based industrial products. Research to develop emerging technologies that address labor challenges, increase productivity and improve input use efficiencies. Also, research to support alternative productive systems. Example, cellular agriculture, controlled environment agriculture. And the last one that we have that uh, is a priority uh, is sector resilience and societal changes. So investments in this priority will include undertaking research aimed at improving sector resilience and response to market, societal, and other pressures. This will include areas such as antimicrobial resistance, animal health and welfare, plant health, food security, biological alternatives to chemical inputs, pesticides, fertilizers, and AI, use, the use of AI in big data and agriculture. So in the pro proposals that you were putting together, there has to be a science methodology, You've got to put the budget and, and the budget will be depending on uh, the different sectors. So normally it is a 50-50 split uh, between industry and uh, Agriculture Canada, except when it comes to greenhouse gases. Greenhouse gases, there is a 30% participation from industry and a maximum of 70% participation from Agriculture Canada or the Canadian government. And they must be detailed 
on how it is going to be measured. So if we go to the next slide. Okay, so basically, what is the impact of the proposal that you have on the sector? Number two is, what will be the outcome? Number three, make sure you have funding partners. Uh, the, the reason for the application, uh, when you put the application forward, Agriculture Canada does require that you have funding partners. Those funding partners can be uh, industry. It has to be industry. It can also be other levels of government that get to a maximum. We'll talk about that uh, later on. So next slide. And the deadline for full project proposal is Monday, October 17th, 2022, 11.59 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And this is firm. And we're not imposing this, but it's actually Agriculture and Agri-Foods Canada because we've got to put together a scientific review board. Your projects have to be submitted to our scientific review board. And then, they're, then they get forwarded to AFC to be put into their system. So it's quite a robust system. Um, and talking about the funding, the maximum, just let me look at my notes because we had a, a session a little while ago that brought this up. And I think it's an important factor. So I will bring it up here. So basically we talked about, you can do what's called um, funding stacking. And in the funding stacking, regional or provincial funds can be matching, but are capped at 85% for the total project. So an example is if it's a 50-50 project, 50% 50 will be given by Agriculture and Agri-Foods Canada, and 30, maximum of 35% is given by provincial or regional funding organizations to make up the 85%. So in this particular case, industry as such will probably be around 15%. Just wanna make sure that you understand. So that basically is the presentation. Very short and sweet because we want to we want to respect you know, your timing and make sure everything's fine. So if you have any questions or mm -hmm. please put them down in the question and answer. Mine's in French, so it's question et réponse. Uh, we can take French questions if you have some. And uh, so please, uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask them now, and we will get back to them. If Louis, I'd like to uh, jump in here at this sure. point. Uh, this is Philip Lewing here. Um, our CFSD cluster is a little different here. Our focus is, as you know, it's a food cluster. So in the past, most of the clusters have been focusing on commodities, looking at uh, what's happening at the farm level. But we would like to have stakeholders involved in all, you know, all areas of 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 the food process here starting from the farm directly um finishing up uh on the plate itself so technologies uh new technology yep. for processing of foods um new type of um innovative ingredients uh, that have been used uh to preserve foods and things like that, those those will be highly attractive. I know it it, it comes under uh, all uh, economic development, but again, in terms of um, climate change, you know, repurposing our food waste uh, to you know to uh, produce edible, um, nice, good tasting food products. Those are the types of projects that we want to embrace here because we want to focus more on the food side. In the past, food has not um, have had th this type of exposure here. So um, it's it's not that we will weight it more if if you're talking about a crop or anything like that, but it has to have. Um, you know, some interest to the consumer in the end, okay? And, and that's just an overview in terms of why CIFSD uh, food cluster um, evolved into, uh, has has been established, okay? And yeah. maybe we'll open up for questions right now. Please. Yeah, well, I just want to, to follow up with what you said, Philip, okay? Uh, the example that I use is uh, to reduce greenhouse gas, a a grocery store can use, uh, convert all their trucks to electric. 
So that would be great for greenhouse gas, but doesn't really do anything for the food chain. However, if the grocery store decides, well, why don't we produce um, uh, strawberries 12 months out of the year in Canada and we can be self-sufficient? That is more interesting because then we've got to develop new technologies to grow them at a lower temperature. We've got to develop and other technologies also to, to, how to how to feed them, how to make them uh, grow uh, to the proper levels. And at the same time, it will reduce greenhouse gases because you don't need all the trucks coming in from California uh, with those particular strawberries. So that is that is attractive to the food cluster. Uh, and it still has an effect on greenhouse gases and also on the, the research that is gonna be needed to make that happen. So Philip, what I'm gonna do is, as you suggested, I'm gonna to go to the questions. So we've got three questions so far. Uh, is there an overhead allowed on the budget? Yes, there is. Um, I believe the, it's in the, the budget form that you fill out. There are overhead, it is, you can claim overhead, yes. Um, hang on. Could you please read confirm requirement 15% of the 15 Okay. So the funding is, there are two brackets. One is 50-50 funding. Okay. The other is 30-70. So 30 from industry, 70 from the government. Uh, when, it, when we talk about uh, the requirement uh, that the question here is, could you please just reiterate, confirm the requirements that 15% of the 50% funding will bring, must be from industry, not academia or government funding. That is an example that I mentioned that we've got provincial governments or regional governments chipping in, okay? If that does not uh, happen, industry can partner up with universities uh, if universities are in kind, there is only a maximum of 10% that can be used as in kind uh, funding. Hopefully that answers your question. Uh, the other question is regarding the 70 30 split on greenhouse gas and carbon sequestration proposals under the climate change environment priorities, how will part applicants have to demonstrate that their proposals qualify for the 70 cost share ratio? Uh, I think it goes by the proposal that you have. Um, the it's going to be up to the um, uh, hang on the I got I got it in French. Just trying to translate into English here. The uh, special no, not special. The board that we have with regard scientific advisory board. Okay, they're the ones that are going to review the projects. And they will look at finding out whether where it falls in. However, you must have at least the 30% of industry to be able to qualify for the, if you feel that your project is greenhouse gas, you have to have the 30% already secured. Uh, and if you feel that your project falls more into the other ones, you need that 50% industry slash other governments uh, confirm before submitting, because that is a requirement that comes from uh, agriculture and agri-food Canada. Uh, Louis, just, uh, just to just yes. add to what you're saying there, um, just putting on your proposal that it reduces greenhouse gas emissions will not cut it. Right. Uh, basically, uh, we need to find out how are you going to prove this, how are you going to measure it, and uh, what type of data are you going to generate to support this claim that there is reduction uh, in greenhouse gas emissions. So it, it's fine. You know, I'm sure in your mind, you probably know it, it does, but we would like something a little bit more substantial here, uh, concrete evidence that you've measured it, or uh, you are able to demonstrate that this is what happened here. And, uh, you know, for a general statement, it's a 50-50 matching fund. The only exception is if you're working uh, on a proposal with respect to the climate change that uh, Louis just uh, mentioned there. And then it's the 30-70 split. Correct. So we've got another question from Hassan. Does food waste recycling that Philip mentioned include agricultural waste as well? Uh, I'm not too sure what agricultural waste, 
but I know that if you're talking agricultural waste as in spent brewer's grains, because basically they're sort of considered a commodity, so they'll be more on the agricultural side of things. Um, spent brewer's grain can be upcycled to other products, and that would fall under uh, the uh, food recycling that, that Philip talked about. Uh, if you're talking about um, uh, the corn stalks, uh, so you take the corn off the corn stalks and you just put that back into the ground, I'm not too sure where that would follow under a food uh, cluster, but there are probably other clusters out there that I would fall under. Absolutely. So let me see if there's any other questions. No, nothing so far. Uh, so we have four questions. Just want to make sure I, I answered them. One, two, three. Yep, four questions. Any other questions? Yeah, the whole idea behind this is we're asking for cooperation and collaboration between industry, yep. uh, researchers, your research partner, and uh, AFC uh, in terms of um, looking at uh, where each each party plays a role, whether it be um, plant scale up at the industry level, whether it be analytical um, testing at the AFC, or maybe it, using some type of equipment that uh, industry doesn't have, and uh, maybe creating a finished product that uh, is unique with uh, shelf stability, things like that. Uh, those are just some examples. If I could just comment um, on the, sure. uh, the, the Q&A we're receiving today, and we had a webinar we did last week as well, uh, and we have been compiling the questions into a document. Uh, we're hoping to have that actually as soon as possible because we had to spend a little bit of time re refining the answers. So those will be circulated, including some of the questions or all of the questions, I should say, that we received today. Quickly, I, I don't know if this was mentioned, but uh, we will appreciate if uh, those who intend to submit a proposal, I, unfortunately, um, we all are under the gun with respect to you just have one week to, to, to submit something. And But if you're able to submit something, a one pager uh, in the next day or so, uh, just giving us an idea in terms of what your proposal is going to be, um, an idea of the budget, an idea of, uh, you know, do you have partners? You know, we it gives us an idea in terms of what to expect um, at the closing date of uh, the 17th. Yeah, so if you can help us on that, we'll appreciate it. Yeah, so that sort of goes with the question that uh, Bala asked, which is, will the CFST provide any assistance in finding industry partners? Uh, we are well connected in the industry, okay? Uh, we will uh, try to connect you with industry partners. Uh, it's up to the partners themselves whether they're interested in, in, in the type of project that, that you're doing. So uh, as Philip said, if you can sort of include a one pager uh, right down at the bottom, we're looking for an industry partner or we're missing an industry partner. We've got two, but they're not quite up to the 50% or the 30%. Okay, then uh, we would help you out with regards to referring you to uh, other industry partners that could help you out. Well, I, I don't want to use such um, such firm words uh, as you do, Louis. We will attempt yes. to help you out. We'll, we'll, we'll put them in contact with people yes. that might be interested. Then it's up to the industry to, to say if they want to go together or not. So those are all the questions so far. Uh, just to let you know, this this is being recorded, so you will be able to go to go back and uh, and uh, see it and listen to it. Uh, we're putting together, as we mentioned, the frequently asked questions. So we've got that down. Uh, we were, as Constant mentioned, uh, we're refining the ones that uh, were asked at the last session. We are going to combine the questions that we had this session, add them to it also, and that should be up and running quite shortly. Oh, we've got some more questions. Hang on. Uh, one more question. Okay. Okay. Could we use PhD student scholarship as matching funding 
since salaries and benefits are a big part of any project budget. That one I'm not familiar with, possibly. Philip, do you have any uh, better understanding on that one? PhD student scholarships. Um, Could that be part of the in-kind? That I need to, this, um, this person who asked that question needs to send us a, a specific, this is a specific issue here. So yeah. they need to send us a, an email and we'll respond to that accordingly here. Yes. Okay. Thank this, you very much. This sounds like a unique situation here. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We have another one here. Uh, in the applicant guide, uh, there is a list under 1.9 of additional documents listed. Okay, uh, are all of these required in the submission? They're not referred to in the proposal template. Uh, I think the, the more information you can put in, I think the proposal template is more of a general. So the overall budget for the year is going to be two, two million, whatever. Okay, and then you can attach uh, an Excel spreadsheet to say how that's going to be split out. Hopefully, that's the type of, of question you're asking. Uh, and I think that that should be fine also. That should be okay. So you can add additional information. Actually, if I can just get some clarity on that, John, uh, you, you just asked the question. When you refer to the applicant guide, I wanna make sure we're talking about the right document because there's an applicant guide that is for the cluster that you know that's an applicant guide for the process that we will be embarking upon very soon or is this the applicant are you referring to the um the template document that we've provided if you can maybe john put that in the question box just for clarity so while john is doing that any other questions that we that you have I guess not. Maybe John can send us a, an, an yeah, email an to email, CFSD yeah. food cluster at cfsd.ca. Yeah. 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 Well, by the way, those are in the discussion boxes. So the email addresses uh, and also other information budget templates. And I believe the proposal, yeah, proposal templates. Okay. So you've got the website, which is in the uh, discussion box. There is also the proposal templates, the address for that also, the link for that. And there's also the budget templates. There's a link for that also. Okay. And hang on, we got, well, let me get this out of the way. And we've got another question response. Is John again. Oh, okay. Uh, Let's have a look at that, John. Okay, the program, my email account. Okay. So where would that actually oh okay okay oh, i gotcha okay. so so john uh so you're referring to the um it's the agri science program clusters component uh, applicant guide uh that actually uh yes it's got lots of great information but in terms of the the uh, what you're referring to i think in under 1.9 i'll just look at it very quickly here um is uh, this actually is an applicant guide for us uh we did provided as a, a resource earlier. We stopped providing it, it as a resource because it, it creates a little bit of confusion. Um, so you don't need to refer to this document. It's actually a document for, for us, uh, uh, the, the food cluster um, component that we're, we're applying for. So, um, you know, it would, hopefully that helps answer your question, John. Basically, to help everyone uh, understand the process a little bit here, um, we are a newly formed food cluster. So we are being managed here by uh, this group here that you see. Um, we ask for proposals to be submitted to us. We administer it. We, um, we then reclassify it. We then do the preliminary screen, screening of it with respect to the scientific content, the budget, as well as, as whether it falls within the, um, 
you know, the guidelines that was passed on to us by Agriculture Canada. This is a program that we're doing in conjunction with Agriculture Canada. Once we collect all this information, we as a group will then have to condense everything and submit all this information to Ag Canada, who in turn then will make a decision in terms of whether if we qualify as a food cluster or your proposals qualify as a, um, an appropriate proposal under this cluster here. So that's in a nutshell, the big picture in terms of how this works here. Once uh, we have been approved, hopefully we will be successful and you will be successful. We will get back to you on the status and then the process starts with respect to you doing your work in the budget and all that wonderful stuff. Yes. Um, still open and Louis, uh, John just sort of uh, added an addendum to his oh, initial okay. question. Uh, and uh, so he's asking other than, so we've provided the proposal template, we've provided the budget template. Uh, there are no other mandatory documents required for the, the submission, correct? So I think what he's asking, are there additional documents that they can include in their proposal? Yes, uh, other than yes. The... I'll say yes to that. For yeah. instance, if you have an industry partner that has a commitment to funds and it's a five-year program, we would like to have letters of intent of letter of support from the industry partner stating that they are committing themselves to X number of dollars to this project here for their five years or whatever. So all these things uh, will help quite a bit, yes. Okay, and we have another question. Okay, when will the cluster package be submitted to Agriculture, Agri-Food Canada? ASAP. Yes, exactly, yeah. So- well, Yeah, we have we, a self-imposed deadline. Yeah, we are sort of, uh, um, we have had weeks to put all this together where other clusters have had the luxuries that initially to have months. Okay? No, five and years. Sometimes, and sometimes years. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So we have been put under the gun by AAFC. And regrettably, we've had very, very tight timelines to be able to put everything together to be able to submit them to AAFC. So the process is, uh, we get we get the proposals. It's got to go through the scientific advisory board. Then it goes to AAFC, and then AAFC decide they they bless it or they don't, and they say yes, the projects are viable. This is a good solid uh, food cluster, which is going to be the food cluster, and then therefore they go ahead, they give us the okay, and we go back to the people saying yes, the food cluster has been approved by Ag Canada. We are moving forward. And these are the projects that have been that have been approved. Uh, just to add to that, Louis, I think the sure. question is in terms of the timing, um, because we have such a tight deadline with receiving proposals. The proposal we are preparing, which is a pretty intense process, <laughs> we've already seen um, the uh, you know what it, it should look like. Um, we are hoping to get that done towards the end of November. And the, the reason for that is we want to leave a little bit of wiggle room in case we have to do some, you know, course corrections or, um, you know, maybe even ask for additional information. Uh, this is our first time going through this, um, so it's not intuitive. AAFC will, if if they note that, you know, maybe there is something with within a proposal that's missing, we can work with the partner, uh, the proposal partner to, to try to get that information. So our timelines are very tight, um, but it's so that at the very end, and I think we're talking in the new year where we have to have everything is ready to go, ready to rock and roll. Um, so we, we want to have everything done by the end of November. So I hope that helps with that question. Oh, hang on, hang on. I got an, I got something on the email. That seems to be a question also. So let's just let me go back.
Okay, that's the one about the food class. Okay, Michael, with regards to using his students. Okay, so we'll get back to you on that one, Michael. And we got another one here. Whoops, hang on. Um, oh, that was the one this morning. So this one's in French. Okay, so I'll get back to that one. So we did have a French uh, webinar this morning. And the question that I just got uh, on the email was from that. Uh, so... Okay, thank you. Okay, so yeah, Foster says everything was fine. Any other questions? If you Fantastic. think of questions, if you think uh, of questions after, please don't hesitate to use the uh, the cluster email, and we will get back to you with regards to a response. And for the researchers out there, please spend some time with your family. Uh, don't be uh, writing uh, proposals over the weekend. It's, uh, <laughs> it's too taxing. Uh, make some time for the family. Have some pumpkin pie. OK, so there's uh, John's ask if we can plan another webinar next Friday. Uh, too late. Next Friday. Friday. Would be and October, that's the 14th. Yeah, that really would be too late. Because then they got to be on the on the 17th. Yes, we we we're not able to do that. Sorry. No. If there are any pressing questions, you can reach out to us yes. and uh we will, if we don't know the specific answer, we will reach out to Ag Canada on your behalf. But uh Yes, to, I, I think with respect to both seminars here, yeah, we've had uh, some good questions. Uh, most of the questions have been um, around budgets and things like that. I think in terms of your, your science and, and your content, you probably have that um, packed. So it's just in terms of, and unfortunately, I, I, I know Constance said this, uh, we are a new cluster. If we have been around for 10 years, I'm sure that we probably have lots of industry partners just banging on your door. But unfortunately, we're a newbie at this point. So that's enough of my apologies for, um, for who we are. But one thing that we want is we want this to succeed. So please put your projects in. We really, really look forward to it. Uh, we feel that a food cluster, uh, it's put it this way, it's about time there is a food cluster, okay, and a food cluster that is taking care of the food industry in Canada. There are other clusters out there, uh, but they're not direct, they do not directly impact the food industry. So we look forward to put it, to being part of that. Oh, do we have other questions? 12? No, okay, no, we're okay. Same place as before. So as Constance said, uh, we're gonna take these questions uh, and answers and put them with the, the ones that we had, the French ones we had this morning and the, the other cluster presentation we had in English, and we're gonna put them all together and put them on the website. So all the questions that people have asked with the answers will be there. So we respect your time, and if you want to sign off and uh, don't have any other questions that we have no other questions that have come in, so I'm just wondering whether we can uh, call this uh, end of the program. Thank you very much. So yes, thank you all. Okay, thank you. Greatly appreciate it. Thanks, everybody. It. Okay, thank you. Bye-bye.